Hey guys, and welcome to the tutorial for Z-Hurons. Let's see what uh, this beautiful sieve has to offer. So it's an infantry civilization. Monk's healing rage is uh, twice as big. Tower's garrison uh, doubles the number of units. Murder holes and herbal medicine are free. Farms cost 40% less. Town center garrison plus 10. Barracks and stable units have plus one armor in Castle Age and one more in Imperial Age. Eudonic Knights is a unique unit and unique technologies are Ironclad, Siege Weapons, Extra Melee Armor and Crenellations plus 3 range Castle Garrison Infantry Fire er Arrows. Timonus is unit resist to conversion and this makes it a really awesome sieve on Arena. So what you usually want to go with students is even though they got great champions, you usually want to go either Halbs and Siege or Paladins, since they get fully arbitrated uh, Halbs and also fully arbitrated Paladins, which are even stronger with, uh, uh, with the bonus that we have here. They have awesome Siege Onagers, Bombard Cannons, and beautiful, beautiful, beautiful monks. All the technologies. And besides that, we also have the uh, unit resistant uh, unit re units resist conversion uh, more than anything. So that's the hardest sieve to convert to convert units from. Okay, so let's jump straight into the game. We're gonna face uh, Dobbs here, right? Yes, and he's gonna play as the Mongols, and we will go over one of. Uh, the strongest uh, strategies for students is the defensive approach. This is a very nice defensive sieve because, well, you can go for towers, you can go for monks, you can go for uh, castles, which are great. Uh, so let's, let's see the build order first. We go six on foot as usual, then extra four on wood. This is all basic stuff as we saw in previous tutorials. Next one is gonna be on the boar right now. Then four more on berries. One more on boar. After 20 all on food. Then we do another lumber cap with two villagers. Two on gold. Obviously we're getting the deers. And one more on berries and we click up. Okay, so let's discuss a strategy here. I was facing the Mongols and he went up quite fast. At first I thought, well, maybe he was scared that I would trash because they don't trash is so good. It's one of the best things to trash with because you can garrison up to 10 villagers in a tower and it makes your tower uh, shoot heavier and, uh, well, do more damage. So I thought, well, maybe he's scared of a trash. I don't know, maybe he went up fast. I'm just gonna boom. And, well, that maybe was my mistake, but also it wasn't a mistake because, well, students uh, can adapt to anything, so... I didn't think that he will go for scouts or for archers or so. I thought he was just gonna boom after this fast up time. So I said, I will go for two monasteries and boom. That's a strategy I really like to do. It, it uh, helps us to get the relics quite fast. Uh, and uh, also then you can either defend with monks or to be aggressive with monks that push. And it's also nice to have those upgrade mines in Imperial Age, especially versus siege sieves like Mongols. If they're not going on good dice, obviously. So now we add two more on wood once we hit the uh, Fiddle Age. We do the market and the blacksmiths. And we click up. So because I was going uh, to monasteries, I add more villagers on gold. We have six on gold, four on wood here, four on wood here, and then we send uh, two more on wood. So total we have five on wood on each side, six on gold, and the rest are on the berries and on the farms. And that's something I didn't see coming. So <laughs> he went up quite fast and he sent eight villagers for a castle push. That's uh, that's quite a lot. And I noticed it's too late. You can see that 
I wanted to make him a monstrous here, and I saw he got to castle age, but I couldn't see his... Actually, I could see his castle, but as I'm a pleb, I haven't noticed this in-game, because you see, it does not appear on the minimap for some reason. Mm. So I didn't really notice this. And you see that if I had noticed this, I would have done my monasteries here, I think, to serve as a wall. But because I didn't notice this, I was doing my monasteries here, and I still haven't noticed this. This is so weird. Um, I done my monasteries here. Okay, so now when you see something like this happen, panic is obviously the way to go. <laughs> But try to stay calm and try to think, okay, he went up quite fast. It means his economy is super weak. And you see two farms. Like, it will be hard for him to to do a lot of damage. So if you can just wall a bit, you should be fine. Especially with two monasteries. Um, I'm just clicking here, I queue two monks from one monastery and not from both. Uh, to, try to wall a bit, even if you don't finish those houses. As long as those monks are behind walls, he won't be able to do any damage. So I'm walling here with houses, and I'm walling here with spells. And yes, spells aids are quite weak, and my Gundais takes them out quite uh, easily. But if you have monks at the back, you should be fine. See, he's coming with three on Gundais, only fletching at the moment. I also added on center on the gold. I could end one more, but... Um, but yeah, as you can see, I was kind of panicking. Uh, try to move your villagers out of range, of course, as soon as possible. You don't want them to get sniped by Mangu dice. And what you need to do as soon as possible is send city upgrade, because it's so important versus Mangu dice. Try to get as many conversions as you can in these kind of situations. And uh, just remember, you always have the economy lead in this situation. If someone is castle pushing you, Try to stay calm, not to do uh, vital mistakes. And this is something uh, that you might want to do, especially when you think, well, okay, he has low economy. I didn't know he's on stone, but I expected him to go for another castle. So I thought, okay, we will do a Mangonel. If he tries to do another castle here, we'll be able to snipe it down and keep making those monks and try to mess the Mangu dice that you convert because this can be crucial. So, slowly we're boom with two town centers. I realized, okay, he if he won't be able to push here, he might want to go uh, to imp and push me with traps. So I sent uh, six on stone quite early, even before my third town center, just so I'll be able to do a defensive castle in the future. And you see, I, I was right. He was coming here, and if you see something like this happening, a great thing to do, it might work from time to time, you can actually snipe a castle. Just imagine that he places a castle here, and he starts making it with one villager. If you ground attack the place where you expect the castle to happen, and you hit it, just as you start building it, you can sometimes snipe a castle and actually kill it with one mangonel shot. Uh, so that, you see, I was trying to do it here. You see, I was attacking where I thought, but I was a bit too late. Too early, actually, not too late. Mm. But Mangonel was super helpful. That was a great shot by me. Even though I didn't get the... Didn't kill, didn't deny the castle. Uh, I made him go back. And I was keep getting... And I kept getting conversions. So that... Uh, that Mangonel was really, really important here. Kept making more. And try to boom, like, it's super important to pay attention here to what's happening, but also booming is quite important. You see, had some idle time here, I could have added a lot, search on center a long time ago, but it's so hard, even in higher level, assuming I am higher level, <laughs> to make this kind of uh, booming under pressure and he had to delete his castle on Zen, which was very good for me, because this castle would have put my main to see in, in real danger here. So let's run forward a bit. I think I finally added a certain center soon. Okay, so this time he made the Mangona as a castle a bit at the back. It was very hard to snap it because he had plus two, so it was kind of in range. 
I was really trying to deny it, but in the end he sniped it. Uh, but I still got some nice conversions here, so his push... Uh, yeah, he got the castle up, but I got Foreman good eyes now. And this area was still safe. This is where I decided that it's time for me to go to Imperial Age. I was still in Teuton Center, so I thought that going Imp is way more important now than booming, because this will end in a trap war. Because he can't really do much damage when I have so many monks. And yeah, I clicked up. Also, something that's important. In this kind of situation, you want to you want to click up with your with your safe town center. Like usually, people click up with their first town center, at least me. But because I was scared that he'll make another castle here or will push me with rams or so, imping at a safe place is very important. And this is a great place for a castle because a it blocks any passage in and b defends most of my economy. The reason why we need a castle early on is, well, we need those traps. We need those traps, and when a castle is up, he won't be able to stop my traps. And assuming that I went up faster, which I did, uh, the castle is crucial. So I kept getting the conversions. He did try to go in. But, well, I had, at this stage, the same amount of one good eyes as he did, maybe even more, yeah? I had even more one good eyes, so I was completely fine. And at this stage of the game, when you're imping, this is a time where you want to add economy. Uh, I'm quite sure I added a certain center in the game, I just don't remember when. And I decided, well, because I don't have a lot of an economy, economy I was only on 44 villagers, adding more Manix, uh, can really help, especially when gold is my main uh, resource at this stage of the game. So Manix is the way to go. So we get Imp, we get those traps going. And as soon as we take those castles down, uh, there is not much he can do. I was sure he had no, not a lot of an economy. As you can see, he was on two town centers as well. Actually, we had the same amount of builders, but yeah, I had... Uh, way stronger military both in numbers and well I got monks and in small numbers monks usually destroy everything except country units like uh, light cave or eagles okay so first castle down we go for the next conscription is always nice and this is where you want to start switching because I didn't think he will stick to Mangudais I thought well he will probably switch to light cave he will try to switch to maybe even Arbalest, I don't know. Because he lost two castles. And this is where we want to add those Siege and Pikes. Tyrants have a great combination of Siege and Pikes because one, you can get Ironclad, which gives your Siege uh, defense, extra defense. And your Halps are a bit stronger with the plus one defense that they get since the uh, well, last two patches, I think. I took a really bad fight here, right? As far as I remember. Yeah, I lost everything. It was quite bad. I wanted to go for another forward castle and to do some uh, forward buildings, but I had to drop back and regroup. I was ahead of in, in a comedy. Did, did I add that? Yeah, I added the third town center. So I had one town center more at this stage. And I just had to mass some units. And monks, pikes, slash halbs, and siege is just a crazy combination, which is almost unstoppable. Okay, let's run forward. You just need to keep your military together. This is kinda YOLO, but I didn't really care about the relics. I probably should have taken the relics, but I just want to get the castle up. And I knew as soon as that castle is up, game is mostly over. He managed to actually do two castles at the back, and he kept insisting on Mangu dies, but... Uh, but yeah, Mangudais are not enough versus this combination. I didn't do Siege in the end, right? Yeah, I did only Halbs and Monks, but uh, Siege could have helped for sure. Uh, so, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, boys. I hope you realized how good you are in defending. And well, see you in the next one. Bye bye.